Hi, it's Jack Hadley with My Social Practice, and welcome to Dental Digital Marketing Discussions, where we discuss all things digital when it comes to marketing, dental practices, orthodontic practices, and dental specialty practices. I have a, a very special guest with us today, someone that I've just recently uh, come to know and uh, has been doing some things with some of our team members. Michael Arias is our guest today. Uh, Michael, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me, Jack. Yeah, glad uh, glad to have you with us. And you're out in California, correct? Yeah, Southern California, where like right now there's a heat wave and it's just <laughs> one oh, it's one oh four right now, and it's barely oh, ten. Gosh. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, I heard you had a real heat wave down that way. Yeah, yeah, but hopefully it gets better soon. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this weather? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're glad to have you here, and we're going to spend a few minutes. Uh, I've asked you to send me three concepts that we're going to talk about each of those mm -hmm. few minutes and uh, then we're going to have a little our fun little quiz at the end and you're going to answer some uh, quiz questions hopefully correctly hopefully, yeah <laughs> hopefully man i don't even know <laughs> two plus two is five i don't know you know like, we'll see <laughs> but before we get started i, I want to make sure that our our viewers know a little bit more about you michael and how you came to be involved in in uh, dental marketing so give us just a minute or two background on on you and what you're doing yeah so pretty much like really fast forward it um, I used to be a nutritionist and I came here to California to help start up a company called my fit foods in California and then from that point on I had a dental consultant who was a buddy who said he was very stressed out at the moment because he needed to attract new patients um, and so he needed it like by in two weeks. So I just said, Hey, you know what? We pretty much here do ground marketing, guerrilla marketing. Right. Um, so I said, why don't you find somebody to do that? And he kind of didn't know how. So I said, I'll do it for him. And then it, I did it. And it took me about nine hours just to get one patient. <laughs> and then the next day it took me 12 hours to get one more patient. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, what? this is effective, but it's, it's too long. Like nobody's really going to keep doing this forever. You know, you get burnt out. So I just came up with systems and strategies on how we can create pipelines from, say, example, Walmart or Costco and stuff like that for those employees to specifically go to that dental practice. And that's how I started doing that. And then so that dental practice officially said, hey, can you come on full time for me? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's fun. It's easy. Like I just literally go around walking, not walking, just talking to people, going to meetings. Yes. And then um, so that happened. And then other dentists in the area kind of heard about what I was doing. So then they said, hey. I'll pay you, you know, like a dollar extra or I'll pay yeah. you more or just don't even, don't even tell your dentist you're doing it for me, you know? <laughs> but then I was like, it's, it's going to clash too much. So I just said, look guys, let me start a blog, right? Um, and put it out on the internet of what I'm doing. And then you guys can read it off from there. And so I started a blog and started getting a couple hundred visits. And I, when I put it out there, I was like, nobody's really going to read this, but like my wife and that's it or my brother, you know, right, or whatever. Right. But no, people started reading it. And then it kind of got like boring to me, the writing all the time, like, you know, typing and stuff. So I said, let me talk about it because I talk a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I decided to make a podcast. And if you hear the yeah. first 20 episodes of it in the podcast, you hear just me talking about tactics and tips on how to attract new patients, like in real time, like have their name and number and write it down, go into a, you know, wherever store or you go into your chamber of commerce or whatever and start attracting new patients through scripts and tactics. And then after that, I started inviting guests every single episode. And so this day, there's every single episode, there's a guest. That's cool. And these guests are dentists, dental consultants, specialists um, who kind of just share what they do as far as attract new patients or create a better success for their dental practice. And yeah, I mean, so far it's, it, it's blown up. I mean, it's been out right. since September. And it's just, it's gone in almost, it's 59 countries now, and it's all over, it's all over the U.S. Well, so, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, toward the end of our visit today, I'm going to make sure that everybody has your contact information so that they can learn more on how to uh, subscribe to the podcast. So, yeah, and, it. and it's kind of neat that you, um, you know, you've kind of differentiated yourself a little bit with this concept of, um, Guerrilla marketing has been around for a long time, but you've kind mm -hmm. of adapted some of those principles to dental marketing. And so uh, one of the three things we're going to talk about today is that I'm going to have you explain that a little bit more. So, all right, well, let's get started. We, uh, as you know, we try to limit our time so that we keep this oh, moving quickly. Timer. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have a little uh, four minute timer set. 
okay. and each time we start visiting to make sure that we are under four minutes or less for for each topic all right yeah i got you i'm gonna try man <laughs> we'll do it Just yeah, cut me off. They, the little timer will go off and cut us both off so okay. <laughs> all right okay. first concept uh, you had talked about uh, the, the concept of branding and the little note that you sent over to me um, you have to know the exact brand and story that you're conveying to uh, every single person that comes in contact, whether it's website, social media, even your employees uh, that, that drives to your location and how you're kind of conveying that brand. So tell us a little bit your thoughts of, uh, related to branding and dental marketing. So to me, branding is, is, has to do with almost everything in the sense if you want to market right. Like I think Forbes.com said it best, that brands are a psychology and science brought together as a promise mark as opposed to a, a trademark. So products have life cycles, right? But brands outlive products. Brands convey uniform quality, credibility, and experience. Brands are valuable and they do many things. Like for example, they bring uniqueness, right? They utilize your brand to set yourself apart from your competitors. Next thing is target audience. I mean, done correctly, your brand can assist you in getting a stronger uh, foothold in your niche market. Emotional connection as well. I believe it was a, a study in 2010 conducted by the world's largest public relations firm that said, um, consider brand identification almost as important as religious preference and ethnic background when people define themselves online. But creating a brand is more than that. I mean, your brand gives value. So done right, people pay that extra thousand or more due to your brand. Like, for example, the Four Seasons Hotels, right? It's a, I believe it's a Canadian-based international luxury five-star hotel management company. And they sold to Bill Gates and Prince, uh, the Prince of Saudi Arabia for about $3.8 billion. So, like, what did they really buy, though? Did they buy locations? Did they buy restaurants, staff, or beachfront property? Uh, no, they bought the brand. So, branding is essential. Building brands builds incredible value for companies and corporations. Yeah. And if you're like kind of hearing it and you're still, or people are listening and they're probably still not as convinced, like, let me give you another example. Like the dollar, right? Is It's a world brand. In essence, it's simply a piece of paper uh, to you and me, right? But branding has made it valuable. All the tools of marketing and brand building have been used to create its value. On the front, you'll find the owner of the brand, which is the Federal Reserve. There's a testimonial from the president of the United States, George Washington. There's a simple user's guide that says this note is legal tender for debts, public and private. And if you're still not convinced, the owner has added the all important emotional message in God we trust. So the dollar is a world brand. But as I said, it's really just a piece of paper. Yeah. Branding has made it worth something. So we kind of have to remember that consumers love and trust brands so much that even in a negative economy, 60% are often or always willing to pay more for it. And creating an identity that resonates with your clients reinforces the emotional relationship that is at the heart of a truly successful brand. So all in all, like it's so important to create a brand for your practice because if not, then trust me, like the community has created one for you. You're either that brand. They're either saying, Hey, you're that dentist on that strip. You're the dentist near the McDonald's. Hey, I didn't even know there was a dentist here. Like that's your brand. Right. Right. And if, if that's you, then you're in trouble because no branding, no differentiation, no differentiation, no long-term profit mobility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah, it's interesting in dental marketing, how branding uh, takes on a little bit uh, different, uh, some different characteristics. And it's, it's always been interesting to me that dentists for the most part have been pitched for a long time that, um, that logos and colors and uh, some of the more traditional kind of mm -hmm. branding things are the end all be all. And really today, new marketing and digital marketing and social media marketing, have kind of made that uh, it's still important but really often the brand is defined by other people and exactly yeah. and the practices ability to steer that brand um, is really I think at the crux of effectiveness um, so it's kind of this kind of trying to do both some traditional branding ideas but then adapt it to new marketing don't you think yeah exactly exactly like people are gonna tell you what your brand is that's right so and so if you can kind of kind of manage that and kind of steer that it's, it's it's an important part of branding today that people didn't have to really worry about uh, years ago so yeah now great, it's great points great points michael uh, let's move to the second idea uh, you had mentioned the the concept of seo and maybe how that relates to some of uh, an overall 
digital marketing strategy. So tell us a little bit what your thoughts are when it comes to the search engine optimization. Well, like by SEO, I kind of meant more of in the sense like all of digital marketing. Now this involves like mobile considerations, organic search, uh, content marketing, social media marketing, nurturing your websites, uh, visitors. But for the sake of time, let's talk about like what we're, what you're really good at too, social media marketing, which is like a great medium, right? For business to build and increase brand presence throughout the internet. Uh, it also provides a very powerful tool to share information and distribute content about products and services. Like social media not only increases brand recognition, what we talked about, but it also improves loyalty and um, it also provides more opportunities to convert. Every post you make on social media platform is an opportunity for customers to convert when you build a following. Like you'll simultaneously have access to new customers, recent customers, old customers, and you'll be able to interact with all of them. Every blog post or image or video or comment you share is a chance for someone to react and every reaction you could lead to a site visit and eventually uh, a conversion. And then you also get like increased inbound traffic, richer customer experience, um, improved customer insights, and so, so much more. Yeah. So to me, social media marketing is, is uh, if, if you're not doing it, then like, it's not that you're not doing it, it's that you're just behind. You know, yeah. you need to start, you, you should have started already and start attacking social yeah. media. And I'm sure you, you, you know that as much. Well, yeah, and we, we, both of us probably have lots of experiences to visit with practices and with doctors and team members and, and, and help kind of coach them along. Um, I'm curious, when you get an opportunity to visit with a practice that maybe isn't doing much with social media yet, maybe they say, yeah, we have a Facebook page, we don't really do much there, or, or whatever they say, what, what are the two or three things that you usually uh, typically will recommend to them if they say, hey, Michael, we just don't really know how to get started or what to do. You kind of, what, what do you usually advise most practices anyway? What I like to do is first of all, like kind of check out their social media. Now, I'm not a social media expert or anything like that. I'm, I'm more of just marketing, right? But I do look into the social media aspect just to see, because for example, say you post something up, right? That says like, hey, free whitening for life for the first five likes, right? But who's your audience? Like, is it just other dental offices and dental consultants? Or is your audience like people of your community? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. So I, I recommend obviously creating uh, an audience first, right? And that can be as easy as having your employees doing like check-ins every time they go into their, their job, right? Having your hygienist check in to Facebook every time she goes in, kind of sharing stuff on her social media uh, platforms, things like that. Um, also share it also on your, say for example, you have a website and you have a blog, share it on your blog, yeah. share it with your community, put it out there as far as as much social um, media you can. Also be interactive. It's very important to do social listening. Um, and yeah. in a sense, like social media gives you an opportunity to gain valuable information about what your customers are interested in, right? And how they behave. So just type in a hashtag like um, Ranch Cucamonga, California. See what, what's going on in that in that yeah. essence, right? And then go from there, participate with the events, the local community events and things like that. And then just mention your, your um, tags or your social media yeah. brands. You know, I was noticing on your website, I was looking at it earlier uh, this morning and looking at uh, just some of the, the structure, you had kind of done a little uh, blackboard sort of structure of some of the things that services that you provide. And I noticed that it was interesting that you did talk a lot about, about local events and mm -hmm. about community. And I think that the takeaway for those, those of our listeners or, or viewers today that are watching and just getting started, because we have a lot of practices that aren't doing very much yet. Um, of course, a lot of them are, but a lot of them aren't. And I think one of the most important things, hold on, <laughs> one of the most important things for them to remember is, uh, and I think we're going to talk about that in a minute as your third point uh, in part, is this, this physicality, this you know, you are a physical business. People walk in physically through your door, mm -hmm. and they sit down with you, and you're in a physical community, even though we talk about digital marketing and, and virtual, you know, online stuff all the time. In reality, doctors' businesses are based in the physical world. And so I, I liked some of the things that you were talking about on your website. And I think that really ties into to the whole social media component because great social media starts inside the practice typically yeah. not on the internet and so um that that might be a good segue into our third mm -hmm. item which is uh, this concept of kind of 
guerrilla marketing. I think you've called it ground marketing. Yeah. If I, if I read that correctly. So tell us about how all these things kind of tie together and how you are using ground marketing to help uh, dentists grow their businesses. So ground marketing, like in essence, is pretty much guerrilla marketing, right? We've been doing it way before digital marketing, but digital marketing has made our lives easier, but it's also um, kind of like where everybody's at at the same time, right? Yeah. So, but ground marketing is also a way to build relationships in the community where your dental practice is located. Now, this is what like I specialize in. And this kind of marketing is a must if you're a local business and you want to increase your customer base. So the dental marketing technique uses tactics that builds pipelines where new patients flow consistently from business companies, communities to your dental practice. Um, it produces results on paper uh, with new potential patients' names, numbers, types of insurance, and when you can contact them and whatever other information the ground marketer considers important, right? It, it does wonders. But ground marketing attracts customers during offline times too. So like, if you think about it, like let's face it, people aren't online 24 seven, right? They go to work, right. they go shopping, they go to school and do other activities in their community. So why not be there, right? Ground marketers go to these events or even host them Ground marketers talk to everyone and are present at any booth, lunch and learn, benefits fair, school district. Like you're, you're the face, you know what I mean? You're the person that, say, for example, nobody ever goes online and says, what am I going to look on the internet today? Let me look at a dental website, right? right? When you start feeling pain, that's when you're like, okay, you know what? Let me start. <laughs> yeah. Or I just moved. Let me go look for a dentist, right? And then you type it in. And then you see on the website, then you look at your time or something. And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be late for work. Let me go, right? Yeah. Say you're at work and then one of the dental websites that you were looking at they're doing a lunch on at your job. You're obviously going to be more inclined to sign up to them because you're like, you know, I was just looking at your website. You're here. And the person that's, I guess, um, portraying your business, they're approachable. They have a great personality. They're going to, you know, sign you up. They're going to sign people up. Yeah. And the amazing thing is person to person contact creates trust, right? You and me both know that. Like people yeah. do business with people they know, like, and trust. That's right. Getting out into the community speeds up that process. They get to see you and your employees as friendly, honest people. And not only as an online digital ad. So when customers see you participating and connecting with them, they'll begin to think of you as the authority dentist or the go-to person when they need a dental service. Yeah. Essentially, it shows people you're real and that they can trust you with their oral health. And also, all in all, you always get better information in person. Like they'll even give you their insurance card right then and there. They'll like throw it at you and say, "Hey, what can I, what can I get done?" You know, and things like that. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's interesting as you were citing some of those examples um, I often find it it that dental practices will sometimes forget that they are really in a in a very unique position because there are not very many businesses when you think about all the businesses that you do business with locally mm -hmm. or even not locally there are very few where you have this um, this kind of face-to-face -face relationship maybe you do with your hairdresser or maybe at the gym, you have a personal trainer. Yeah. But when you think about all the other businesses, they're not relationship based and they're not face to face like that. And, and this whole concept, I think, is a very unique sort of angle that you've taken where you've taken the principles of guerrilla marketing, basically, and adapted mm -hmm. it to a dental practice. And is that a big component of, of kind of your strategies that you work with uh, practices on? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, mainly a lot of people um, hire me just to coach their employees or one specific mm -hmm. employee to do ground marketing or guerrilla marketing, you know, build relationships. But it also, everything plays a role, like especially social media, especially like, you know, having a great website because people are still going to look at that, you know, right. they're not going to go to your dental office right then and there. They're going to sign up, give you your name and number and then schedule the appointment. When they get home, they'll probably look you up. They want to see personality on your social media. Right. You know? They want to see everything else. So yeah, it's, it's a really big component too, because I mean, you're just consistently getting pa new patients in from a specific businesses or specific places. So it's, it's really good to build authority in the web. I mean, the community. Yeah. Do you, uh, when you do your podcast, do you often um, visit, do you, do you explain more like more guerrilla marketing, ground marketing tactics on your podcast? Do you talk about those a lot? Uh, at the beginning, I did. It was just me. But yeah. now, since, you know, you have guests on and things like that, you kind of let them talk. Right, right I, sh right. I probably should. I was just thinking of doing like a Monday marketing thing, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Think I think that's a good it. idea. I, I think, uh, you know, I, I try to keep up with a lot of the folks in our, in the dental industry that are um, really smart at, at marketing. And I think that this, this little component that you've kind of focused on is a, is a very unique one and really a differentiator 
for some of the things you're doing. So I, I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Appreciate so. it. Yeah. Well, right. those are our three ideas. I hope that uh, they were useful for our viewers. And uh, I do before before we get uh, end the end the interview. I am going to give the contact information. But before we do that, I am going to share my screen here and talk for a minute about our little quiz thing we're going to oh man do. oh man <laughs> okay hold on um so we are actually uh gonna going to be playing today for a a really great orthodontic oh. practice kelly orthodontics down in fort worth texas we've gotten okay. to know a little bit about kelly orthodontics lately and uh they are doing some fantastic things down there. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kelly oh, wow. and his wife Allison have even started a, uh, a charity organization where they are doing good in the world. They started about five years ago and it's uh, called Live Thankfully at livethankfully.org and they're just doing some amazing things down there. And so we uh, wanted to kind of honor them today by having you play our quiz on on behalf of this practice so wow are those all bags <laughs> yeah wow yeah That's and I, I hope some of our viewers will go to livethankfully.org and just see the amazing things that dr kelly and his wife and their team are doing so to, to kind of honor them uh, we wanted to play uh the game on their behalf and if you answer the question correctly you don't win anything. I'm sorry, Michael. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we will. Back. <laughs> between uh, on your behalf and my social practices behalf, we will treat the team uh, to lunch at Kelly Orthodontics. So okay, they, they okay. get to win, okay? <laughs> okay, Kelly Orthodontics. Don't hate me. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, let's go with the first question that our team has come up with. Oh, geez. Michael, okay. which metal is heavier? Silver? Or gold? Uh, is it timed? No, I can't Google it. No, I can't Google it. Okay. <laughs> no, no help. Uh, I'm going to go with gold. That is correct. All right. <laughs> gold, heavier than silver. <laughs> Silver's pretty heavy too, though, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I think so. Gold, I don't know. Gold is, still, is uh, heavier. All right, good. You're one for one. Number two. Who painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Okay. You know, actually, it wasn't until like a year ago that I just realized it's Sistine. I thought it was 16. I was like, oh, 16. Chapel. But it's Michelangelo. I only know that because yeah. my name is Michelangelo. So I was like, oh, Michelangelo. That is correct. Michelangelo. Two for two. Okay. I've got five questions prepared, but it looks like if you get all three right up front, we're done. So number three, uh, you've probably heard of the Aurora Borealis. What is Aurora Borealis commonly known as their northern lights that is correct have, i've never seen the northern lights have you no i i mean on, on this picture i have but right. other than that, i mean the are not seen person it. right no where would it be would it be in alaska or yeah what? like you have to be way north um to see them but yeah it's kind of on my bucket list i don't even know where you go to see them but yeah. i thought this i mean if it looks anything like that image right there it's like i gotta gotta go see this someday. put a tent right there and then just camp out exactly Jeez. exactly well three for three yes very nice so we are going and to dr be kelly be contacting uh, dr kelly and his team next week and uh, and treating them to lunch and and uh, kudos to <laughs> all of you for for the great charity work that you're doing down there yeah. in your community in Fort Worth and that's kind of a nice tie what they're doing in their community to the things that we talked about with Michael today so yeah uh, mm -hmm. anyway congratulations on that and, okay, and nice Michael. job Michael. Ah. oh yeah barely barely <laughs> okay finally, millionaire. one more slide one more slide I uh, want to make sure everybody has your contact information it's Michael Arias uh, at the dental marketer the email is Michael at the dental marketer dot site and the website is the dental marketer dot site s i t e yeah. does that look all correct michael yeah that's correct yeah all right like, great, <laughs> great. Site. all right let me stop sharing here and uh, any any other last thoughts before we sign off michael uh no just thank you man thank you jack for having me like it was 
I was nervous and then I wasn't nervous and then I was even more nervous when the questions came up, especially knowing that they do so much for the community. I'm like, oh my gosh, if I get these wrong, they're gonna they're not even gonna watch me anymore. So thank uh, you, man. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate yeah, it so much. Thanks for being there. I think I think you're doing some uh, some really great things. We'll look forward to getting to know you better as time goes by. Awesome. All right. All right. For all of us at my social practice and on behalf of Michael, we'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.